I'm Dr. Melanie Windridge, a physicist and mountaineer. I'm climbing Everest and I want to investigate the science that gets us to the summit. Improvements in weather forecasting have had a big impact on safety in the mountains. The summit push from base camp to the top and back can take four to six days, so we look for a window of good weather before we leave camp to minimise the risk of being caught in a storm. Today, I'm at the Met Office and I'm here to learn about weather forecasting. How has weather forecasting improved in the last 30 years? It's changed immeasurably, really, meteorology. It's really moved on, and most of that is to do with computing power. The supercomputers that we used to use 30 years ago here at the Met Office were less powerful than, than the average mobile phone is today. So, you know, you're carrying around in your pocket what we were using to make forecasts. Nowadays, uh, the, the supercomputer we have here is the most powerful supercomputer in the world for meteorology, and it does 14,000 trillion calculations per second. You can't even imagine no, that kind exactly. Of so that's that's 2 million for every man, woman and child on the planet <laughs> and that's in one, that's in a second. That's how many calculations it does. So that's that's the major advance over the past 30 years. And what does that mean for weather forecasting? Broadly speaking, it means we're, we're much more accurate. We're as accurate now four days ahead as we were 30 years ago, one day ahead. So we've improved that much. What happens with a, a weather forecast, it breaks the atmosphere down into layers right around the globe. And so the more computer power you have, the, the smaller the layers can be. And back 30 years ago, particularly mountains and things like that weren't very well modeled. They were very vague, as you can imagine. So as you get more detailed, you get more computer power, you can make those mountains more detailed and you can get a better picture of what's going on. Is mountain weather forecasting more difficult than other cases? Yes, I mean anyone who's been up the side of a hill, <laughs> let alone a significant mountain, knows how dramatically the weather changes. Just at a slight elevation in height, you get a massive drop in temperature and the winds are so crucial as well and they obviously swirl and move through all the valleys. So yes, mountain forecasting is, is very, very difficult and it's even harder, of course, if you haven't got the, the computer power to model them properly. So the more accurately you can model them, at least then you've got a, a fighting chance to get the forecast more accurate. So how do you think that the improvements in weather forecasting have affected safety on Everest? Oh, well, hugely again, and it's just down to more accurate weather forecasts because we can now model the mountains better. You can then model the winds and the atmosphere and, and the clouds over the top of them uh, in more detail too. So the, that improvement just then goes into improved safety as well because we're educating the public better and we're able to communicate better through things like social media, then it gets the message out there as well, so it keeps people safer. The mountain weather is notoriously difficult to get right. Quite strong local effects, it's really hard to predict. The general rule about the forecasts here is that if they all agree, then you probably have a correct forecast. What are the biggest things that are going to cause us trouble in the mountains? The forecast obviously can change dramatically and, and it's emphasised more by, by hills. So the higher up you go, the more quickly the weather can change. The, the stronger the winds are effectively and so that drives in the weather much more quickly. And of course cloud is, is one of the key things because cloud at 2,000 feet when you're uh, down on the ground at sea level has no impact at all. But if you're up at 2,000 feet, then it means you can't see in front of your face. And so that's, that's very dramatic. And of course, people don't realize that most precipitation, certainly in autumn and winter at those kind of heights, is, is snow. It may not be snow when it gets to the ground, but it's, it's snow at 2,000, 3,000 feet up. So often you can get a, a very quick covering of snow and it can dramatically change. And of course, those changing wind directions also uh, can create dramatic gusts and sudden gusts and you get down drafts associated with clouds as well. So it's, it's a very hostile and very dangerous environment. What does it mean, like better weather? I mean, what are we looking for? Is it high pressure or sun or what are we looking for in good weather? So if you're going up a mountain, you want the winds to be light and you want the, the cloud base to be high so you're not walking through cloud. You don't want any rain or snow coming your way and it's crucial. So yeah, high pressure generally moving in will, will give lighter winds. So that's often what we talk about when, when we're talking about a weather window. This year, there was an unprecedented spell of good weather. In early May, the jet stream moved over Everest, meaning it was very windy and teams were stuck until the weather improved. At base camp, team leaders watched the forecasts and climbers waited for the go-ahead. Then, a large high-pressure system came in and stayed there for 11 whole days. Temperatures rose, 
the winds calmed, and many lucky climbers had beautiful summit days. Better computing and modelling capabilities have had a huge positive effect on weather forecasting over the last 30 years. Not only can this keep us safer on mountains such as Everest, it's also good for the economy and can help us plan our weekends in the great outdoors.